just from a standing. So we've got the G87 and we want a four-wheel drive convert it and we want to go to Texas and make it one of the fastest BMWs in the world. What's happening guys and girls? We are here finally, the day has come. It's episode five here at the Tom Wrigley R44 drag build. So if you didn't know already, we're heading to Texas 2K in March, but before that, we've got to build a car and we've got to attend the PRI show in December in uh, Indianapolis. It's, a, it's an industry show all about engineering and motorsports. It's kind of like SEMA, if you know SEMA, but it's more for the industry. So we've got Today, it's the 3rd of September, it's 7 p.m. I've just driven from work in the X-Drive M2. I've been enjoying it. You know, if you have just seen the episode four, um, where we discuss, well, we show you what it's like to drive a G87 M2 that's X-Drive. It's been pretty good. I've been enjoying it. Um, but yeah, we've got crunch time now. It's September the 3rd. We've got up until the last week of November to have this car done, tested, wrapped in li racing livery and on a plane on its way to Indianapolis. But we're here at Tom Reed Performance. As you can always, yeah, it is crazy. We've got uh, Joe here stripping out a B58. We've got Tom's drag car. So we'll get Tom mic'd up. I've literally just arrived, but we'll get, I wanna show you what we're building. This is like the demo of the predecessor that will come. Um, which is the G87 drag build. But let's get Tom mic'd up and let's run through this and get an insight into what we're trying to achieve. All right, Tom's now mic'd up. I want him to run us through. So Tom, I want to achieve a one-to-one -one power to weight ratio because I've seen the Supra boys doing sub yeah. sevens or sub eights. Sorry. Yeah. And they're running about 13... 1400 wheel, I think. They get 1400 that. wheel and almost 1400 kg. Mm. But I don't know if it's achievable, but we'll see. Yeah, we can give it a good go. Um, obviously, this is uh, my own G80, which is our shop car. Um, this has been the test bed for the G80 tuning and uh, testing that we've done over the past sort of 12 months. We had the stage two basic stage three packages sorted but this is like you know you're still stage three or stage four whatever you want to class it as i mean you know it's it's not really i don't know this is so a much stage custom again. there's so much custom work gone into this now but you know we're at an 8.4 which i think is pretty decent um considering and you know we've got some more stuff going on the car now with one last attempt or maybe a couple more so you're out the, tomorrow the reason yeah. this is yeah, obviously yeah. all live so crunch time is always yeah, upon us we've yeah. got Stage three cars, we've got other things happening, yeah, but this cool. car's, yeah, out for it's kind of like fast, final, last. Push. Final one this year, probably. Final maybe. one this year. So we went down to a really small brake kit, um, but obviously it's still quite a heavy car and they just weren't, they didn't feel safe for the car. They were burning through pads like crazy. So we went back to the stock brakes, they're quite heavy. So we've gone back to my old faithful APs. Pro 5000s, nice light caliper, hey, look. two piece disc. Stunning. Yeah, so you've got yeah. those on the front, yeah. you've got like and a we've drag got staff on the rear. Yeah, we've got the aerospace uh, rear brakes. They got off my mate's motorbike. Yeah, so, so they're tiny boys, they're lightweight, super lightweight. And they were the ones we had on the front to match. Not really, they just, they just didn't feel like they were doing the job. So that's essentially what they're, suspension wise, we've just got some KWs, we've got some suspension secret control arms, which work well. Um, we've just fitted some diff bushes just to stop the diff from twisting. We were seeing so much movement in the diff. Uh, we've got the DSS axles, and then we've got an East Coast drive line carbon prop is the kind of drive line. Um, wheels wise, these are just the daily, well, say daily, <laughs> not really daily, but they're road legal. And then we've got the West Forged proper drag chunky boys um, for when we go drag racing. But this is just it's crazy. They're doing some road hits, testing, and also. If we go to a runway event, obviously you might have seen recently we did 203, which is the world record. 
for a half mile and a BM. Wow. So no one's ever gone over 200 miles an hour, so that's pretty cool. That is cool. So um, we've got to do some crazy things like this. We're gonna try and incorporate brands that we use day to day, like EBC, to try and make some drag yeah. brakes that are kind of in that mixture where we can take them on but the cut. This cup. is, you know, this is what we learned, which is nice. These little things like, I learned that that caliper is too small. Yeah. So when you come to do it, I can say to EBC, no, that's too small, we need yeah. this, or we need that. You know, we learned so much along the way. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's the test bed for all this We're stuff. lucky to, yeah, that's why we've uh, we've chosen to do it. We've got that, we've got Boston on the wheels, so yeah. they're gonna make us a one-off kind of thing. Maybe into production, drag wheels. Um, but let's drop this car down and let's figure out engine-wise what we're gonna do and what pros and what we're gonna change going into the future. See, in the heart of every drag build, it is down to the motor. You can do two things, increase the power or reduce your weight to get faster. So Tom's been playing around a lot with this. So yeah. this turbo is new. So what is it's this? It's a bigger boy. Um, 82? So 83, 85. 83, 85, and you previously ran a? 7480. 7480, so, so we're just We know what, it needs to, you know, it needs to have a lot more headroom. There's testing to be done, you know, a lot of people have convinced me it's gonna to be too big, but I'd rather learn, you know, they're out here trying to learn. We're at a level now where if we just keep doing the same stuff as everyone, we're never gonna be faster, so let's try it. Um, obviously the engine is, is crazy. It's mad, isn't it? It is mad. I've mad. got the same kind of manifold setup on my M3 Touring, but, yeah. which we did last year together as like our yeah. other marketing campaign. The Tour, this is gonna be the next kind of one, but he's out testing tomorrow. Yeah. Fingers crossed, he calls me and he says this is the one because yeah. we've got We've got to order these from the States. Yeah, we'll yeah, then we'll... polish this, yeah, okay. finish it in a certain color we don't know yet. And then we've got to do something. So obviously we work closely with CSF and they help us and they will continue to help us so much when yeah. we take the car to the States, where to go, what to do with it. So what, this is like a one-off, isn't it? So yeah, what is so, this? So, so the intake system, obviously the fit, the oil immediately notice. So this is like a custom inlet here with the port injection. Then we run a CSF charge cooler here. Um, my thinking with this build was it is literally going to be only used at drag racing events. So we've got a nice big CSF core there. We've moved the cooler away from the engine. So all the heat off the engine is not heat soaking in. And obviously run an ice box setup to go there. Daily use on the road, this wouldn't be a good setup because effectively you've got nothing to cool that water. So it's great with the, guy, the, the, the ice is nice and cold. Mm -hmm. But once that gets warm, there's nothing to cool it. So effectively with your setup, we'll go back for the- Can I just the... take a minute and just paint and just- ah. Yeah, just, that's just, just the engine coming out of the world's fastest 140 there. Yeah. <laughs> This might actually, coming from my place, yeah. where we're just shipping boxes in this industry, and then you come here, and you've got two gentlemen yeah, just yeah. pulling a B58 out. You've got yeah. another gentleman building another B58. Yeah. But it's, yeah, you've learned here that we're gonna do something. Yeah, so that's, so basically, yeah, we'll go back to that. So with your car, we're gonna run the traditional uh, CSF level up. Uh, so that'll be, you know, the, the original manifold. We'll run an ice box with it still, yeah. but with that setup, we'll run it to incorporate your front uh, so we'll keep this. charge cooler. So effectively, if you're driving along, you probably won't get the ultimate cooling performance that we've got with this, mm -hmm. but you'll get, means it'll go along and it'll balance out. If you're on, if you're on like a long road, mm -hmm. it'll stay at say ambient or just mm -hmm. below. Whereas this, it'll get below ambient while it's full of ice. As soon as the mm -hmm. ice goes, it'll then go 20 degrees, 30, 40. It's the hardest thing, isn't it? When so, you're yeah, waiting to race, is, especially at Texas, I think it's yeah, quite- Yeah, you got it all go cool. We, so yeah. well, we might even there alter it so it just runs through the manifold. We'll see. see. Yeah. You know, yeah. there, there, there's a bit to discuss on that. Um, engine wise, um, 5150 parts. So we're obviously 5150 on UK. Um, that's the parts we're going to order for your build. Mm -hmm. Three litre still. Um, we've got a sleeve block from Spec J Motorsport with mm -hmm. O ring block. So that essentially is a ring that we uh, machine into the block pinches the head gasket and enables us to run loads of boost. Get all the internals out, we'll lay them out and see what we can strip, and then we will be replacing some of the interior nice with something mix. like this, like a Tillet carbon seat. We're gonna put a full roll. You haven't got a cage in here, so we're no. gonna put a full roll cage in, hopefully some air jacks, but yeah. we have a big problem. Tom said I'm not allowed air jacks, I'm allowed a half cage that's bolted in and it takes yeah. one week because he's built many race cars and they always say two weeks and they're, 110% yeah. well, of the time, you, mate. four weeks. I've set so my piece on that. If I fuck <laughs> this one up, then uh, 
yeah, we won't be going anywhere. Cue the music. Is it really enough? Giving my heart and my soul, but still don't feel like enough. Feeling inadequate, still getting after it. Trust me, the feeling is tough. Feeling is rough. Hold on a second, I'm thinking too much. Really want to flow like water. But I don't drink it enough. Spending more time with my daughter. Really enjoying the innocence. Teaching a mind, I'm never teach. All of the things I've never been taught. Stuck in my mind. All of these thoughts throw me off. But hold that thought just for a second. I got two incoming calls. Tell me that I am enough. Cool, we have finally finished the strip down. It's 8.40 p.m. So yeah, it's been pretty intense. The hardest thing was obviously getting some of the bigger panels out of the car, but it's nice to see a bit of money in my eyes. So we can get, we've got the seats there. I think we can get about five grand. All the smaller parts, I think they'll just slow, they'll sell slowly as people crash their cars, but those seats are quite rare. But as well as money, we've got some weight saving and that's what we're really going for. So we've got like the seat belts, little wind, you know, 1.2 kg, we've got two of those. I don't even know what speaker is. So we've got these, these are the rear speakers. Again, 1.2. Um, this is quite cool. Found my ring card. So it's got two laps left from last year. We took this car to the ring when we dropped it. Um, but we've got loads of parts here. So that's now been done. The car's fully stripped. We've got, so all the airbags are out, which means we need to code it. So we're gonna code it quickly now, remove all of that from the car so we can drive it. We're gonna put a seat in and I'm gonna do something quite cheeky and I'm gonna head up to SW Motorsports where they're gonna install a cage. So come have a look inside the car now on what it looks like. Good morning, good morning. So day two of this episode, we are in Preston in the north of England. We're just dancing between the sunshine, but we're at SW Motorsports. SW Motorsports is big in the game. They've been in this industry for years. They build roll cages day in, day out. We've got it in our FAE M3, finishing white. It looks amazing, matches the GT3 RS, but they do everything. They do seat kind of deletes for the back of the car. They do rails, they do mounts and everything in between, but we'll go into more detail. So as I said, we're time crunching. Tom said I can only have a half cage, no air jacks, and no all singing, all dancing. Is it really enough? Giving my heart and my soul, but still don't feel like enough. Feeling inadequate, still getting after it. Trust me, the feeling is tough. Feeling is rough. Hold on a second, I'm thinking too much. Really want to flow like water, but I don't drink it enough. Spending more time with my daughter. Really enjoying the innocence. Teaching a mind, I'm never teach. All of the things I've never been taught. Stuck in my mind, all of these thoughts don't be off. But hold that thought just for a second. I got two incoming calls. Tell me that all right, I'm as you know, know, time restraints are crazy on this project. So these just landed from the Netherlands. We're going to put them back in the box after taking a couple photos and obviously having a, a team kind of overview of the product. They are beautiful. Uh, Ship them over to SW Motorsports, which is literally installing the uh, air jacks into the car right at this moment in time, actually over or up north. So they're doing that now. These will arrive tomorrow. They'll slot them in, test everything's good, and then they'll take everything out of the car and then powder coat it, slip these in, and that's the big job done on the air jacks. Then we'll have to pipe them all in, but we'll come back to that soon. So let's get this box up, give it a FedEx, and uh, cut it. All right, so the last bits are going down. If you've ever seen 3D scanning, we've got the reference points in here. We've also used this like white paint. So that, well, it's a white spray that actually disappears over time. But if you have any black surfaces or reflective surfaces, it makes them scannable. But we're about to get started, so we'll get the 3D scanner now and we'll start going through the reference points and pulling them up to the PC. We've got the, we've got the file, obviously it's pulled in in a random orientation. Sort of done a cut plot through the floor there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna contour the box perfectly so that when it goes in, it can only fit in one place. Um, there's no gaps for the welders don't have to weld up huge gaps and make a mess of the floor. So you'd send this off to the guys downstairs, they would then start processing? Yeah, so I'll turn this from essentially just a, a, a box yeah. into a flat cut. Mm -hmm. So it'll go over to them as a line drawing, it'll get programmed into the machine, cut out, and then I'll have to do drawings for every single one of the boxes. The planes of reference angles are gonna be within regulation. And then from there, I can confidently start drawing up. And when you wash your car, you realize how many times you've hit someone. Like, I've got so <laughs> many scrapes on the car. You know what I mean? You just think you're going to get through or that type thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. First time for <laughs> Wow. Wow, wow, wow. They pulled it off. Wow. Shit. 
It looks amazing. Anyways, let's go look for the lads. Yeah, I've just creeped. I'm, I'm actually blown away at how good this has come together. Like, this is a bolting cage, but it's a full... It's got the... Let's go. Wow. So, I must say, thank you so much. The car looks amazing. What's, what's it been like? Great, I love a project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a stressful couple of weeks. As if you know, I didn't start this video. Tom was not interested in a roll cage. Well, he was like a half cage for the vibes, but not a full kind of yeah, full spec cage with air jacks. Um, he was so worried about the coloring and everything. And you guys kind of just blew it out of the park by building a cage that's up to spec, has air jacks, and you paid it outside the car, you put it inside the car, and it looks crazy. So I'm gonna hand you this mic. Walk me through kind of what you've done on the CAD model since we last sat here a week ago. Um, and yeah, just so you know, they cannot do this normally in a week. They've gone above and beyond. But yeah, let me uh, pass over the mic and you run us through what you've done, what you've done with the air jacks, and we'll go from there. So essentially what we've done is scan of the inside of the car, we had a look behind the dash, saw what sort of access we had to be able to bring uh, the sort of the lateral halves down. That's the sidebars that come down and through the dash. There's a decent bit of access, so we worked out while keeping within regs, we should be able to get it in while not taking the dash out. So, trimmed a little scallop into the dash, we were able to set it into there, um, and then using all sort of FIA size and spec mounts get the cage in there we put it on flush connectors as well so no saddle clamps no nothing so it's as close to a welding as it can be without being a welding you've got the practicality of it being painted outside the car not having to get the inside painted while still having a full cage in there that's fully approved got a nice uh, setback halo bar in there for you to mount your harnesses to uh, the rear mounts to one existing point and then everything's spreader plated boxed into the car and the air jacks were plasmid through, boxes on there, and then we've had to do some trimming to the sort of the, the it's quite unique bracing on the underside of the G87. We've got your custom heel plates here as well, so obviously you know when you take your carpet out of the car, your carpet and your foam underneath is sort of maybe 40 mil deep. Um, so we do heel plates, we do for a hell of a lot of cars. Brings it up, keeps it level, keeps your heels and your ball of your foot, optimal position for pedal control. And for you, we've done a little custom, little custom R44 one. Notched it around your air jack, so don't need to worry about any pedal control. Though. That's a crazy thing. And then another question was, Reese, is it all right if I move your pedal over yeah. slightly? So with doing like these um, these plates, we can obviously move the throttle pedal over slightly to accommodate for the um, air jacks. But these are like the craziest things, and I can only appreciate and say thank you to the guys at SW because without the innovation and the ability to innovate things on the spot it would have just been a case yeah we make cages I put a cage in but these guys have got you know pla 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 like, I, I, we talk through the machines what you have here on site so we've got the 3d scanner so that 3d scans gives us a millimeter accurate essentially it's a, a 3d millimeter accurate photograph of the inside of a car so we can measure we can design everything off that then we've got the laser cutter, so we can, all of these boxes here, which are all profiled perfectly to the sill, they then get programmed in, laser cut, then we've got a bender, press breaks them perfectly, so everything's essentially just perfectly bent to how it's designed, um, fits into the car. Not only does that reduce inaccuracy, it also brings time scales down, so you know, you can order a cage on a Monday and have it by the weekend, because all the bits are pre-programmed, pre-loaded. If you buy a, a rear half cage, um, obviously you're taking your rear seats out, so you need something, well, well, a lot of people want something to replace that, keep it sort of OEM spec and keep it tidy. So we do the seat delete closeout panels, all made in house. Um, I think we're, we're pretty much the only cage company in the UK that does all of this stuff and makes it all in house. Yeah, it's a quick, we'll have a look through the workshop, you know, as you can see, you guys are designers you're doing things properly like just having shit on the desk it, you know it just shows that it's not just like you're always coming up with cool stuff we've got prototypes going on we've got air ducts being built on the 3d printer um, but as much as a cad's great it's all a dream so let's go have a look at the reality 
So I didn't expect to get a free bit of pallet inside my uh, inside my car, but this is a fun fact. So before, obviously, I just had a little preview as I sneaked in, but this lovely pallet that's holding up the, I guess, center console like cluster on the top of the roof. For some reason, if you remove that on a GAE X platform, it actually disengages some of the other features of the car. So the young men here, when I arrived, it was just taped to the roof. So it's now had a 3D printed kind of bracket, does bracket made up. Um, which is now being resin, resin to the carbon roof, yeah. um, which again, I'm so glad I came here because that those little things are gonna screw us over in the long term where we're like, got the tape on, which done us for like three months. And then when we need it to go to a sh like, to be done, we're like, how can we make a bracket? We don't have a 3D printer. So um, I'm gonna hand you this mic, give us a brief overview of what you've done, why my door cards are off um, and <laughs> yeah, everything in between. So obviously you've 3D scanned it all, Drawing it up, got all the pick points in there, made sure all the door bars are all the correct level for regulations, foot plates are all the right size for regulations, made sure that everything's going through where it needs to do in the correct places. Um, and then just started drawing it up, really. Only other sort of issues we had was air jacks on the underside, obviously with that under tray, mm -hmm. making sure that we have access to be able to get the air jacks in and out. So if you see, the bolt here is actually just about five mil behind the back side of the air jack. So, you know, if we hadn't thought about it, then you wouldn't have been able to get the cage in and out or the air jacks in and out, making sure that you're still gonna be able to get a seat fitted in there while having the air jacks mounted. So keeping them as far back as possible while still being able to take the cage in and out. We've got some nice little harness uh, alignment tabs there. Stops the harnesses from sliding around the corner of the cage. Everything's on flush connectors, which is a hell of a lot stronger than saddle clamp connectors. Gives it that sort of welding look while it's still being able to be taken in and out of the car. So worst case you ever destroy this in a horrendous crash. <laughs> like fingers. At least you'll be able to keep the cage as long as it's fine. So yeah, um, contoured some little brackets and some push clips. Um, so that's also removable as well. So you'll be able to unscrew it from the 3D prints, take that in and out. Um, finished it off in a papaya colour match. It's nearly there. I'd say 99%. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. Managed to get the air jacks right in there. See how yeah. close it is to the pedal there. So you've still got access to get your get your toe behind the air jack and still have proper pedal control there. What? What's this? Is your new parachute stuff? So <laughs> I can't believe you've eliminated. Another one of my shit kind of, when building this, is a, it's a nightmare, like yeah. the dreams of having a parachute or the requirements when racing. It's now again, all right, no one makes a G87 parachute. Yeah. Framework and wow, I mentioned it on the WhatsApp, could you make one and to, to see it now I don't think on I the craft. replied, we just went, yeah, cool, done. Yeah, so essentially the, since sort of the, E36s, 46s, right the way up. They all have bolt on front and rear crash bars. Yeah. So what we've done here is we've taken off the original, which was unbelievably heavy as well, um, replaced it with a T45 crash bar, got all the brackets on there to still mount to the bumper and the exhaust heat shield. So that by itself is a weight saving piece. But yeah, what yeah. we've done additionally is added a stub and some gusseting on there as well to bring a parachute stub out there. We've got a mount and we've got a parachute for you that's going on the back, which... Uh, I just don't want to pull it, but I think you're just rolling down the road with a parachute. Oh, damn right. Win. It's a look. <laughs> it's a look. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's yeah, do that in all its glory and see what we can do. All right, so what an experience it's been. We've been driving for over two hours now from uh, SW Motorsport over to Tom Rigney Performance. I've got no aircon. I just learned how to open the window. So if you pull up the stationary, press and hold the lock button or unlock the car, you can drop the windows. Um, I've got no microphones, so air, air, AirPods are in. Um, yeah, I've got this block of timber holding this on. But overall, I couldn't be happier. Like, what is this? This is stunning. Um, so we're just pulling into Tom Wrigley's now. Um, and yeah, just excited to hear 
what their thoughts are on the cage and, and kind of go from there. But you can hear like a few under the cage. Is it really enough? Giving my heart and my soul, but still don't feel like enough. Feeling inadequate, still getting accurate. Trust me, the feeling is tough. Feeling is rough. Hold on a second, I'm thinking too much. Really want to flow like water, but I don't drink it enough. Spending more time with my daughter. 